Talking food. Oh, we like to do that on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E dot net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 401 is with Chef Kristen Kish from Fast Foodies on True TV. I'm great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. You guys look like you're having the time of your life on Fast Foodies. I mean, I'm so <laughs> jealous that I'm not in there with you guys. I think we can just start a petition now to get you as one of our guests, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get you in there somehow <laughs> but but it has to be one of the most interactive sho- it has to be one of the most interactive shows in the way that we know what what you guys are cooking and and, and then we want to try it at home too because we we want to you know to fill the house with the flavor you know and that's the beauty of what fast foodies is is that you know we're we're you know you might not be into like one of the high-end cooking chef shows or um you know you might not even be interested in cooking at all but what fast food does is it's like that connective tissue that gives someone a starting base and at the end of the day like food is almost kind of secondary to the comedy the friendship the the you know debauchery at some time you know and it's this thing that just kind of rides through and connects everything together and gives you a point of reference like you were saying it's you know anyone and everyone can relate to a mcdonald's hamburger in some way don't you think though that the the one of the real connections of fast foodies is the fact that some of our personal conversations the greatest conversations have always been while while chowing down on some fast food mm-hmm. A hundred percent. I mean, in any great dinner party or otherwise, everyone hangs out in the kitchen. You know, yep. food, again, brings everyone to the table. And what I love most about Fast Foodies is that I'm, I'm getting to meet these guests and these celebrity guests that would have never crossed my path ever in my entire life. I highly doubt I would have ever met Chris Jericho. I highly doubt <laughs> Baron Davis would have ever shown up in my wheelhouse of somewhere. And it's it's really cool to meet these amazing people and we all get you know, we all can gather and and talk about fast food for hours and hours and hours. And it's gotta be fantastic to you to be there with them because you see that they're just human beings. They just have a job in professional wrestling. Yes, exactly. You know, they, I will say every single guest that we've had from season one and, and going into season two, which is now two episodes even longer, so we have two other extra guests, is that they all have an appreciation for food and what we're doing. And it's very, um, I feel personally very respected because it's, you know, they're having fun, they're, you know, having drinks and doing everything. But at the end of the day, they're really invested in what we're actually making for them. How are you able to replicate the food? Because, I mean, I can sit here and try to build a better burger, but man, unless I have, you know, some sort of recipe, I, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, as, as a chef, we, we, we can kind of go into like our Rolodex of technique and flavor profiles. Oh. But I got to tell you, the recreate or the copycatting of the dishes are really hard because these fast food chains are, are consistently the same, almost like mechanically and scientifically so. And so, you know, we aren't those kind of chefs. But I will say 99.9% of the time, it's always going to be better. Um, and oftentimes we're trying to make it not as good. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was going to ask you about these restaurants and stuff like that in the way. Are they knocking on your door saying, stop it, do not put our real recipe out there? <laughs> no, um, no, they haven't gotten a hold of us, uh, the three of the chefs personally. Um, I'm sure somewhere there's some petition that someone's signing to be like, stop telling us you know, t- stop telling everyone about the, the <laughs> secrets that McDonald's has. But we're all, we're all kind of guessing, and I think it's probably – um, we're we're definitely still wrong, I'm sure. <laughs> Which I, you know, I, I'm so glad you said you're guessing because I, isn't that what a lot of us did during the lockdown is that we went into the kitchen and we thought, okay, I'm going to create like this person. I'm going to guess my way into having a great dish here today. I mean, that's the best part of cooking is the experimentation and not everything has to be perfectly how someone else does it at the end of the day when you get in your kitchen and you cook and you have a good time you know have a glass of wine do whatever you want to do and when you take that first bite do you like it and if that answer is yes fantastic then nothing i could ever make you um could really come come to compete with that because i think when you make something and you find yourself really proud of it i mean that's those are the best dishes to me you're gonna think i'm weird Kristen, but while watching fast foodies on true tv i have a newfound respect for those that are inside those fast food restaurants going you know what take 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 two more minutes i'm fine because i know what you're doing in there (laughs) and and i respect you for what you're doing yes i mean there's there's an art 
to fast food, a true art. There's a true science. There's, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know how to do. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of secrets. I'm sure one day there'll be like an entire television show on debunking the myths and, and the secrets of fast food. And I will watch that happily. <laughs> now, one of the things now, new viewers and stuff like that to the show fast food, he said that they need to understand, is there a time limit for those that are competing on this? Because you know how it is. You've got one minute. You're going, how are they going to get that done in one minute? Mm. You know, there's not a time limit, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's still a tel- television show. We have crew and, every, you know, people that need breaks. And, of course, we also need to take a step away at some point. Um, so we collectively, internally, have kind of this, you know, we all kind of chat before, Jeremy, Justin, and I. We we're like, how, how long do you think you need for this one? And we'll typically go with the person that needs, with you know, the most time. Um, so, in general, the copycat round where we try to nail it exactly is, you know, we try to keep it under that 45 minute hour mark. Um, and then for the next round, the remix round where we get to be real, real chefs, um, we try to stick around an hour and a half, two hours. I'll tell you, one, one of the superstars on this show, those sets, you guys, I, I love how you guys have made it uniquely your own style. The, the set? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's an existing restaurant and, you know, it was a beautiful setup, gorgeous. We all, yeah, we all walked in there and we're like, wow, this kitchen is amazing. To think as a chef, this was your, this was your restaurant kitchen. Like it's, it's beautiful. Had everything really set up for us. Um, Yeah. So it was an existing real working restaurant. So I've got to ask you a question now. How is it that you're able to train your taste buds to recognize what food is inside something that is all mixed together? Oh my gosh. It is, um, it's eating a lot of food in practice. <laughs> I've had my fair share of fast food a hundred percent. I, I grew up with the stuff. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a, I feel like if you have the skill and the art of knowing how to cook, you also have a palate that can develop over time. And it's really just, it's, it's practice and it's years and years of eating a lot of really good food. It, does it also involve listening to other people who are trying to, like, like, for instance, like, it seems like the world has discovered fennel since the lockdown. Everybody's buying fennel these days. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, with these food programs, and hopefully Fast Foodies does this as well, is that we can introduce viewers that perhaps never heard of fennel or um, Japanese A5 Wagyu beef or, you know, how to cook a steak. And they can pick up some of these little tips and tricks because I think cooking is cooking is universal, whether you do it every day or whether you do it because you have to. At some point, hopefully, as a human being, you will have to have cooked for yourself or for someone else. Um, and it's really, you know... The greatest pl- pleasure in my in my mind is cooking for someone else. With all the celebrities that are on Fast Foodies on True TV, you, you got to love Joe McHale. That guy is one of the most down to earth, caring, <laughs> compassionate human beings I've ever met. I will mirror that sentiment exactly, and he loves chefs. Like he <laughs> loves chefs in the process of cooking. Like we'll text back and forth, or we'll DM if I like, post a food picture, and um, you know, walk him through on how to cook a steak. Like he's just genuinely interested in, in the chef world and what food is doing. Well, because he's a comedian, he builds jokes, he creates the stage, he understands the process mm-hmm. of getting two people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is, you know, you know, he was on season one and he's also on season two is that season one, he definitely was more of his comedy self and he was yeah. like really screwing with us. Season two, he came, he came in and he was like a sponge. He was like, just <laughs> teach me how to do everything. And it was like such an interesting dynamic. I think we built that trust with him on season one and it was really exciting to have him back on, on this next season. Oh, Kristen, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you very much. We'll see you on season three. You bet. Be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.